I suppose we start at the beginning. First started recording when I was about 16 or 17. It was mono, one track. And you had to get it right because if you didn't, you had to go back and do the whole thing again. So everyone was on their toes. If you fucked up, then everyone else in the band would look at you like, oh, great, now we've got to do the whole thing again. You didn't get a lot of time in the studio then because most of the studios were owned by the major record companies. So there was hardly any independent studios. We did go into one called RG Jones in south of London when I was working with Denny Mitchell and the Sound Sations and we did record there. I think we went on to three track from there. So you could actually separate the vocals. They were built for film. So you had speech effects and music on three separate tracks, but there was no sync. So you right. couldn't drop in on one. You could balance a little bit more. Sure. You know? it, it wasn't like the non-destructive nature of audio workstations nowadays. <laughs> We'll come on to that. There weren't many studios, and so if you wanted to make a record, you had to either go to a record label and get in their studio, or you had to pay an independent studio, of which, as I've said, there were very few and far between. So recording in those days was very limited, incredibly limited. And then I joined a band called the Bow Street Runners. The drummer was Mick Fleetwood. We had a recording contract. And so we went into a studio and then I think it had got to four track. So we then had four tracks, but still no sync. So you still couldn't drop in. You still had to do it all in one go. But of course, we'd have the bass and drums and guitar on one track, the vocal on another track, the keyboard on another track or something, or oh, backing vocalists or whatever. But then I remember eight track arriving. And eight track Scully machines were the first. Ad Vision Studios had one, and that had self sync on it. So okay. you could actually drop in in the middle of the track and overdub from then on. But it was tricky. You had to get it right because the record heads and the playback heads were three or four inches apart. So the engineers learned how to get in without clipping the last bit and without going over the next bit. It was a right. fine art. It was we okay. lost down the line because the last time I went into an analog recording studio, the guy had no idea how to do that. And I realized it was dangerous to let him try because he'd have wiped it. And once you wipe it on analog, it's gone. You can't get it back. So that was eight track, which we thought was fantastic because you could build up like the Beach Boys and the Beatles did, build tracks up, all these tracks that you had. And then, of course, you could mix them down to stereo, put that stereo up on a fresh eight track, and you had another six tracks to play. Generational loss there, one so generation the, down. Yeah, that's kind of like the, the concept of down mixing, like once you have six stems. Well, for instance, Sergeant Pepper was done on a four track, well, it was done on a multiple four track machine, so that, yeah. they mixed that. But, but of course, we were also working in mono. So you could mix down to one track, if you ever saw that documentary with George Martin going through the tapes of Sergeant Pepper, you get the lead vocal and the rhythm guitar on one track. You would never do now, but it was necessary because you only had two other tracks to play with. Things were very limited back then to, to what you could do as compared to now. But I also think that it had an effect on the musicians because you had to get it right. You had to be on your toes when that red light came on. You had to play and you had to get it right. And now, of course, you don't have to get it right because guitar players do a guitar solo. They'll do six or seven runs at it and then they'll comp it together. Same with the vocals, they'll comp together the best bits of each. And I think that the discipline has gone out of playing in studios to a certain degree. It's made people lazy.